Hello guys and welcome back, I'm Robert Warshank and in this episode we're going to be going over the most popular decks currently found on ladder. So for those of you who have never watched one of our monthly meta videos, I'm going to go through each class and kind of talk about the most popular decks that fall within each class, uh, what makes them powerful, any notable changes that have happened, uh, along with the way I've built the deck, why I've built it the way I've built it, and any changes that you'd see from it than a meta deck because I build like, I, I have normally some small modifications I make to the meta decks uh, to make them feel more of it, more so yours, um, to, just to add a little bit of flavor, of them, flavor into them, but and besides that, I kind of want to cover what are the most popular decks, and you don't want to stray too far uh, from the pact. So with that, we're going to head into Mage with our first deck, the Tempo Mage being um, the Mage deck that you're going to be seeing more often than not. Um, with the new inclusion of the Stargazer, Luna, Cosmic, Anomaly, and a Shooting Star allows this deck to draw even more than it normally did, have a little bit more burst potential, and also be able to clear up um, the board. And that's normally where this deck really lacked was during the early stages of the game, you've got cards like Mana Worm, Sorcerer's Apprentice, and your Arcanologist to be able to play minions on the board, get board control, Arcana or er, Explosive Runes helps clear your opponent's board as well when they try to develop minions. But once it starts hitting turn four on, uh, this deck really has an issue maintaining board, and then that's when you normally switch all of your spells and damaging abilities to your opponent's face. Um, but now that you have Shooting Star and a card that costs 4 mana and makes Shooting Star plus 2 spell power, you actually can hold on to the board a little bit longer. Um, and with holding on to the board, an additional 1 to 2 turns allows those minions, whether they're Mana Worm, Sorcerer's Apprentice, Kirin Tor Mages, or Cosmic Anomalies, even if they hit face once or twice, it's still 4 to 8 damage, which is upwards of a third to someone's life. If someone starts with, you know, 30 health, and you're able to hit them, you know, twice in the face with a 4 attack card, you're, you're, 8 damage is a sizable amount of damage uh, for a Temple Mage to get in with just minions, considering you've got, of course, have the Fireballs, the Explosive Runes, the Frost Bolts, um, the Arcane Mist and all that good stuff so this deck uh, can pump out and explode a huge amount of damage very very quickly um, in the combination of using like we've mentioned spells and or minions and they all work really really well together so very powerful mage deck fairly cheap 5200 dust um, for a solid mage deck is really not that bad um, and it's very favorable favorable against some matchups it does have uh, some bad matchups um, but right now it's looking like pretty good considering all of the uh, anti-control and control decks we're seeing on ladder uh, especially uh, ones with that have lack of healing like the um, death rattle hunter the death rattle rogue which i've seen a little bit the quest rogue and the odd rogue all of them have very very little healing um so this deck is pretty solid uh, moving to Hunter, so unfortunately, I didn't want to mention Control Mage because I haven't seen the deck at all. I've played against zero Control Mages at all. So I don't want to mention a deck that I really haven't seen because um, I don't want to, like, you know, if you're playing against Mage, most likely Tempo could be Control. But, like, if 75% of the time it's Tempo, let's talk about the 75% of the time. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the next deck we're going to talk about is probably the most popular Hunter uh, list at the moment. And that's going to be the Death Rattle Hunter, one of the new... Um, kind of decks and archetypes that arose with this uh, latest expansion the boomstay project um so the core of this deck is to combo um your death rattle abilities such as play dead and your um cube with cards like your devil sore egg and your mechanical whelp to make explosive board states um so for example let's say you have a mechanical whelp or savannah high main just a relatively decent sized minion on the board you go ahead and cube it and then you play dead your cube you're actually not only going to summon two minions from the play dead of whatever the cube was able to eat but also whenever the cube dies it's going to summon two more and if you're summoning uh two twos that make seven sevens if you're summoning savannah high mains or if you're summoning king crushes your opponent's probably going to die <laughs> and the 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 annoying part about it is the cube is a death rattle right so if they decide they want a twisting nether because they have you have like a board full of minions you're still going to get whatever's left over from the cube dying in the first place. So these these Death Rattle Hunter board states are really, really resilient to AoE um, just because of all of the Death Rattle effects plus the size of the board before the Death Rattle effects. You've got multiple ways to trigger Death Rattle effects, such as your 
Um, like we mentioned, our play dead, you have your uh, terror scale stalker, you've got your carnivorous cube, um, and of course, popping the minion by just it dying is a way to get the death rattle proc as well. Houndmaster Shaw gives uh, most all of your minions on rush on your side of the field and when you play them, which allows you to trade instantaneously, which is really, really powerful. Um, so overall, this deck is really, really good against mid uh, slower mid range and control decks. Um, it has a little bit of issue versus the aggro decks, but it's not unwinnable and the only reason i say it's very slow against aggro is because most of the time your first play if you don't draw well is turn three you're either playing like a devil sore egg a spider bomb a spitch or stitch tracker uh, maybe a terror scale stalker for tempo and beyond that this deck really nothing happens until turn four or five when you're able to start comboing those pieces together i mean if you draw really well you've got you know candle shot or um prints on two and um, from there you can kind of just like tempo out right um, but those won't be every single game so this deck does start off a little bit slower but it's has a stupid amount of value when you hit you know turns five on when you start cuban and playing savannah high main kithina winter wisp a very expensive desa deck though uh looking at 1200 dust there so very expensive but very good very good and uh, it seems to be very fun as well i've seen i've heard a lot of good things about the um the ability for the play style of this deck to, you know, you've got a lot of different opportunities to make different plays, which allows for different play styles, and it makes the deck overall, in my opinion, more enjoyable the more plays that you have to make, and, um, you know, put your little thinking cap on there a little bit more than normal. Normal hunter, deck as, normal hunter decks, as we remember, are very face-oriented, very little mistakes, and by very little mistakes, it's like, you have one play that's like really good and you have one play that's like not really good. So it's like, which one do you really pick there? It's not that hard. Um, so the next hunter deck we're gonna take a look at is going to be the No Minion Hunter deck. Uh, this deck has been around for quite some time now, ever since Rock Delar to my side and the Lesser uh, Emerald Spellstone have been around. Uh, the key of this deck is to play as many secrets uh, in the early game as you can to bump up that spell stone at least two secrets so you can get maximum doggo action if normally even if you can just make uh three doggos and that's just a simple play one secret while emerald's emerald spell stone in your hand is in your hand sorry um it's a good amount of value it's really hard for a lot of these classes especially uh more of the aggro slash mid-range decks to deal um with the lesser emerald spell stone especially uh, decks like odd rogue um, Druid, um, depending on the Shaman you're playing, a lot of them right now don't even run Bloodlust. If you're looking at like the Tempo Shutter Shaman, uh, that actually only runs Lightning Storms, which wouldn't technically kill the Doggos. Um, so there's just a lot of decks that this performs fairly against, well against due to the fact that Spellstone is so powerful. And you also have a variety of other tools to your advantage, just as, such as, of course, your Secrets, Rock Delar to my side, Rexar is ultimate value as well. So very solid deck, gets the job done overall, and not that many terrible matchups i mean yes there's those games where you either draw like all of your late end or all of your spell stones and you don't draw any secrets and then there's some games where you draw all your secrets and you don't draw your spell stones but most of the time you want to mulligan very heavily to getting that spell stone in your hand and then worrying about the secrets later because if you think about it there's only two spell stones in the deck so you want to try to get them asap but the secrets You've got a lot more secrets than you do spell stones, so you're more likely to draw into secrets than you are into spell stones. So just keep a keep an eye on out for your mulligan. I find a lot of players playing a lot of these decks. Their key isn't how they play the deck; it's almost revolving around the mulligan stage and what they're trying to do. Because if you if you just get blown out in the first two turns or three turns of a game, it doesn't really matter how good you are if the deck can't beat. Like if the deck isn't a deck that can clear board and catch up, and this isn't a deck that can do that. You're just going to lose every game because you didn't establish either dominance or some sort of defensive maneuvers in the first two turns of the game that will provide you the support to make it to the late game. So um, definitely just think about that there. Moving to the even lock. Uh, not really anything has changed about this deck. It's still just as powerful as it was. I'm pretty sure it's still considered a tier one deck due to the fact that it's most of the time you're going to draw what you need due to the fact that your hero power only costs one mana so you're able to draw as much as you'd like and uh, being able to play a twilight drake and or a mountain giant on turn three or four depending on you have, if you have coin or not happens most of the time um besides that the only inclusions of new cards in this deck would be the demonic project and that's just a personal choice of mine i just there's one thing i don't like is playing against like a combo deck and then having nothing in your deck that can stop the combo or mitigate it or you know try to resist 
being comboed down, whether it's a Togwoggle Druid, a Malagos Druid, Shudder Shaman, Quest Rogue. I mean, the list just goes on with these combo decks now, right? So, um, Demonic Project kind of gives you at least some hedge against those. Granted, it's not the best against an aggro type deck, um, but unfortunately, we all know if you queue with aggro, you're going to get your worst matchup, and if you queue with control, you're going to get your worst matchup. So, with that, if we don't want to play against combo decks when we're playing this particular deck, let's at least add a tool or two in there to like potentially be able to stop that combo, right? Uh, it makes for some great highlights, some good times, and it's an overall fairly fun card. Uh, the only other difference I have to say in this deck is the Mossy Horror, but I mean, I I when I first looked at this deck, I actually was playing Mossy Horror uh, right when even Warlock was coming out, and I um, played it with that spell that reduces the minion's attack um, by two on your opponent's side and it has echo i can't think of the name of it um, but i used to play two and two and it was like just a solid super awesome combo you didn't even need to play twisting nether because the, the clear from that was so great um so the mossy horror being in there isn't also not really a surprise with all the uh, giggly inventors around so i would actually if you really feel like mossy horror is doing you well i wouldn't see a problem with taking out the dread infernal and adding in another mossy horror or if you don't like the mossy horror throw in another dread infernal I don't really see any problems there, but yeah, pretty straightforward deck. Not going to go over too much Been around for a while. Uh, moving to Zoo Warlock. I'm only including the one Zoo Warlock list because they all try to basically do the same thing. This list is probably the most predominant list we'll see, and that's going to be the Light Warden Heal uh, Zoo Warlock that runs the Prince. Um, so this deck's trying to basically accomplish what Zoo is always trying to accomplish, Throw up as many resilient, nice, thick daddy minions on the board as possible. Draw Prince early on. From there, they now have not only Prince to buff cards like Doubling, Doubling Imp and Serenite Chain Game, they also have the new card called Soul Infusion, uh, which their leftmost minion in their hand gets plus two, plus two, which means if they're able to Soul Infusion their, you know, for example, Serenite, they're going to get two Serenites that are both going to be four fives, and that's a pretty good card for four mana. We're talking an eight ten four mana and it has taunt especially if they have coin which every time i play against it, it's like turn two soul fire or uh i mean soul infusion into coin serenite and then it's just like all right you played a three mana eight ten with taunt cool <laughs> um so really powerful deck probably one of the most popular decks on ladder at the moment if not the most popular um just the fact that the dust count on it 6300 dust it's fairly cheap the deck is i don't want to say really easy but it's not the hardest deck in the world to play a lot of the turns are very straightforward you play your minions you tap you play more minions you tap the combos are very like the most sophisticated combo in this deck is to just make sure your minions are damaged and then to play fungal enchanter and heal those minions so your light warden gets buffed you can do some crazy stuff so for example a play that you know me a lot of people overlook is let's say you have your void walker out and they also have like a one two out um a lot of people won't think attacking in with the void walker to the one two on your opponent's side then healing the void walker up and then attacking with light warden because you actually get an, an additional damage because white light warden actually gets plus two attack for each healed minion on your board while void walker would only do one damage there's like some small intricacies there where you can pump out just a little bit more damage um, just by playing proper ordering. So watch out for things like that. But besides that, deck's fairly easy, straightforward, uh, very, very, very good right now, and doesn't really have a lot of bad matchups overall. Um, Control Warlock doesn't really exist right now. I've seen a couple people try it, but I haven't seen it enough to make it worthy of mentioning because I don't want you building deck. I don't want you guys building decks that aren't right now seeing play and aren't proven to be good. Um, we're covering, like I said, what you're going to see 90, 95% of the time, uh, you know, you'll match up with stuff that isn't on this list and that's the other 5%, but is it really worth going over and, you know, wasting your time? Not really. So just keep that in mind. I know I always mention that in every one of these videos, but I just, it's important to, important to say to me. It's important for me to say <laughs> uh the next deck we're in or should i say class we're gonna go over is gonna be the druid uh druid is also very very popular probably like druid druid and warlock right now are, are hand in hand in popularity and that's just because they have a exceedingly strong decks in their arsenal right now um this one being the togwoggle malagos druid so i want to i might spend a little bit more time on this one just because this is kind of like two decks in one and the reason i bundled malagos and king togwoggle together is because in my mind, 
Malagos Druid has its weaknesses, right? It's weak to classes that have massive amounts of armor up, and you also sometimes you just can't get the you have to use your swipes and you don't have the damage to get there. Also, King Togwoggle has his has its issues too, because let's say your opponent plays, you know, demonic project, they discard a core piece, you know, your opponent's deck was milled faster than yours. Like, um, there's a, there's a lot of problems. Then I wouldn't say a lot of problems, but there's issues with both. And to add in King Togwoggle or add in a Malagos to either other deck is literally two cards. So now you fit in two tier one decks in one deck by literally just changing out two cards. So you now have a Malagos win condition and you have a King Togwoggle win condition. And I was actually pushing this deck prior to the expand this la Boomsday project before they came out when we were originally testing our Togwoggle deck. When we were playing it, I was said, why didn't I, why, why is there no Malagos in here? And I started, I added Malagos in our King Togwoggle deck. And I'm like, man, this feels really good. I'm like, oh, we have two win conditions now. And the deck was super fun. We played it for like, I want to say like almost a week because the deck was a lot of fun, really hard to play a lot of key. Like there's just a lot of key stuff that you can change and, you know, different ways to play the deck. Do you play it aggressive? Do you play it passive? You know, do we draw? Do we do damage? Do we gain armor? Like there's a lot of, a lot of intricacies, intricacies. So um, that's why I think the deck in itself is going to move to this sort of blend of a Malagos Togwoggle. And if you're like, Rob, why don't you just show Malagos and or Togwoggle separately? Because it's literally, guys, like a two card difference. <laughs> so if you don't like Togwoggle in this deck, take out King Togwoggle, take out Soul Thief and add two other cards. Add Lich King and just anything else. It doesn't even matter. Or like Giggling Inventors. And if you don't want Malagos, just take out Malagos and take out Moonfires and add Giggling Inventors. <laughs> so like I would rather much rather have two other or an, an additional win condition than to play two other cards because like having both combos in the deck is just so relatively cheap. Like it's a it's a joke. So having both of these in here, in my opinion, makes the deck so much better, so much more reliable, and gives it another win condition, which is craziness. So there you go. There's my there's my take on that deck at the moment. Uh, the next deck that's an up and coming deck, but I've actually seen a lot of it more recent. Um, because like Tog and Mally Druid, we've seen that for a while now. That really hasn't changed. It's just is a popular deck. But the Token Druid here is a deck that I've seen in the past more so in this past week, um, than uh, ever before. Uh, and it's a really solid list. I know you're like, why is there only one infestation? Uh, why is there no? I know what what card am I missing here? I know there's a card that everybody loves and they always play it in their deck and now I can't think of it. I was actually like making, I was like making a dual, like a, like a note in my head that I wouldn't forget to mention it and why it's not in here and now I can't remember it because I tried so hard. My brain hurts. Anyway, uh, the key of this deck is to play basically as many minions you can every single turn. From there, you're able to go Savage Roar, Branching Paths, buff those minions. Uh, you can also do your Tending Tarn, uh, which is great. Burst as well, just because you get the additional plus one, plus one, which is what your um, Power of the Wild does. This deck's a lot of fun as well. I enjoyed playing this deck a lot. We played it this most couple games, this most past recent stream we had like three unfavorable matchups in a row and we were able to pull through we got like three sick wins and i'm probably going to post that video uh, of them all three of the wins because they happened back to back to back and it was just so sick it was it was what it was they were very nasty games and it felt really nice winning them because all of them were not good like they were they just, our opponent had everything they needed to clear board and we just kept coming back making boards pushing damage and getting the job done so i can speak very highly of this deck and uh, it does the job and it does the job really really good and that's continuously putting on a lot of pressure uh, through cards like soul of the forest whispering woods living mana one of my favorite cards if not my favorite card in this deck is the uh, drawlogist and that's just because that, the being able to discover a druid spell druid spells are so good so whether you're discovering an ultimate infestation because we're only playing one a nourish a branching paths a savage roar another soul of the forest another living mana another whispering woods i mean the list goes on this guy is just so disgusting so whatever you do if you have may make any modifications to this deck at all for the love of god don't change out the two mana two three astrologist he is too good you'll love him so much i enjoy the card very very much if it is the most is my favorite card in the deck the card the card's just so nasty um the next class we're going to cover is going to be the Baku. Yeah, the Baku Control Warrior. I want to say Baku Taunt Control Warrior, but it's not that version. Um, 
warrior in a nutshell is not popular right now at all um so if you see a warrior it's probably going to be the baku version they're going to be very controlly um the only difference i would have to say in the list is if they run like soul thief uh one or two super colliders and most of them don't run king mosh but i like king mosh because he's just like whirlwind king mosh feels so cool you're just like oh yeah i cleared the board and i didn't have to use brawl what you gonna do about it boy so um this is also a very greedier version because it runs Direhorn Hatchlings. It doesn't run the Elise though. I don't really like putting the Elise in here because she doesn't really do it. If she like she doesn't really do anything immediately, she does a lot of value later. The problem is if you're playing against an aggressive class, which is what this deck is weak to. Weak to is a like a really really aggressiveness, <laughs> and I say that because if you can't seem to draw brawls or reckless furies, you'll just lose. And unfortunately, when I play this deck, I can't seem to draw a brawl or a reckless fury in the top 15 cards of my deck. But on the other hand, my opponent draws all of their most bestest, awesomest, never before seen, destroy, hit me in the face, aggro cards. So that's why I like Direhorn. It's a decent taunt. And it also, if against the other control matchups, adds a card for your deck later, which will extend out fatigue for you. Another card, if you really don't like Direhorn Hatchlings, but you do want to be favored in the control matchup, you can throw in a dead man's hand. So you're actually cutting two cards in your deck to add one, like, better against control and then you also get to add in another card which is could be better than direhorn against aggro the problem is dead man's hand is completely useless versus aggro while direhorn is almost always pretty good against aggro because a three six taunt for any aggro deck is quite annoying regardless of almost when you play it so you give you take it's kind of which end um the deck thrives on gaining stupid amounts of armor it does stupid amounts of value with dr boom soul thief super collider is absolutely astonishingly amazing <laughs> we were we were testing that out like the first or second day of the expansion uh just because i said it was poo poo and then i was like you know what let's give it a shot and i played the card i'm like holy crap i just killed like six minions with this one weapon i want i i need this <laughs> i like this give me more so right now i'm only playing one super collider just because of how much aggressive dex is on ladder and super collider doesn't really do that great against cards like void walker who aren't like big minions but you have to attack them because they have taunt along with giggling inventor so there's like a lot of cards the super collider doesn't do well against but i right now one of them i think is the sweet spot if the uh, meta gets more controlly more greedy we add in a second one uh, another weakness to this deck is combo decks this deck absolutely gets demolished by togwoggle but that's why we teched in soul thief and also this deck gets demolished by uh, shutter shaman which is i can't really do anything about that <laughs> fuck shutter shamans i'm actually when this is our only warrior deck and the next deck we're actually going to go over is the tempo shutter shaman and i'm not going to go over the normal combo shutter shaman because if you i don't first of all i don't want you to even see the deck and i don't want you to play the deck and i don't want to represent the deck in any way shape or form because it's absolutely dog shit because i hate playing against it it's i ha can't be fun playing the deck and i oh my god i hate the deck so much and I'm, I'm gonna, I know I'm always going to get that comment of the guy that's like, Rob, you know, you hate on Shutter because you're a bad player and uh, you're just bad. And, you know, I like my Shutter. And it's like, okay, that's good for you. Everybody has their opinion, just like everybody has an asshole, but we don't need to share those, okay? <laughs> um, so this is the new Tempo Shutter, which isn't as cancerous. And in my opinion, playing against this doesn't feel as it doesn't feel as bad as playing against just normal shutter because when they play shutter in this deck they don't just win the game you know what i mean it's a great card it's it's like playing guldan it's really really good it puts you super favorable but doesn't just literally win you you don't play guldan and win um so this deck has a sizable amount of minions it runs prince so the key is to basically tempo out draw prince early um you've got a lot of comeback mechanics with stuff like mind control tech a tar creeper some defense hex the serenites the fungal the giggling all work super well together synergies puts it on the board buffs them up if you don't have the buffs but you have a lot of minions on the board you got thrall you got grumble to get additional value from cards like fungal and then giggling and then serenite from there you got like hagatha which generates more calamos which generates value lich king is crazy value and then shutter's crazy value so like all of your five mana cards and below all generate huge amounts of value and synergize with one another so most of the time this deck can literally go toe to toe with a control deck if you space out your value generators accordingly and your opponent doesn't really know what you have in store for them just because this deck is still fairly new and there's a lot of people still making room for different cards but it's a deck i've seen a lot of people play especially in legend and um 
uh, a lot of the high-end streamers are, uh, have tested it and have been playing it, um, which means everybody else is going to start playing it or have been playing it. So uh, super solid deck. Seems really, really fun um, if you like winning and uh, not like this is this is what shutter should have been from the beginning not a card that you literally just play like fucking shit six shutters in a turn and kill your opponent from however much health they're at like that that's bullshit the deck also requires no skill this looks like it requires you know it looks like it requires brain cells and you know playing shutter does autumn doesn't just win you games you actually have to do other things it's amazing that the card was it was intended for other uses um Moving on to Rogue, uh, we're looking here at the Odd Rogue. I don't really want to cover this deck too much because it really hasn't changed at all. Like, literally nothing has changed in this deck besides adding Giggling Adventor. And because you add Giggling Adventor, we can add Blood Knight. Um, but the Blood Knight is a new recent tech. Um, a lot of people are now teching it in because of the Gigglings. I originally had our Void Rippers in here, the ones that swap the attack and defense of all the minions on the board. That was originally what was in the rip, uh, where Blood Knights are. So you can either play two Blood Knights or two Void Rippers. It, the deck is going to perform, I think, basically the same. You know what I'm saying? The deck does what it does, and it does it really good. And that's play a minion every turn, use a 2-2 dagger to kill your opponent's shit or hit him in the face. Uh, you buff your minions with Fungal Mancer, and you hit him in the face some more with Cold Blood and Leroy. Really simple deck to play, really, really good deck. You can climb exceedingly fast, and the deck is very, very cheap. It's been around for a while now. I don't want to cover it too much. Um, the next deck we're going to cover is the Quest Rogue. The Quest Rogue is making another, an another reappearance, guys. <laughs> so this deck has been nerfed like twice. <laughs> it's been appeared, it disappears, it appears, it disappears, and now it's reappeared because there's now the ultimate value combo where you can play Valera and then you can play your um your Zola the Gorgon and then you copy your Gorgon with the Gorgon that Valera the Hollow makes and then you make another Gorgon and you basically have an infinite amount of four fours and then from there once you get your opponent low enough you go ahead and kill them with cards like your Stone Tusk Boar and South Sea Deck Hand and with all of the really greedy control decks out there right now decks like this thrive so I've actually gone against every single rogue I've played in the past three days have been a quest rogue so will it continue to run amok maybe maybe not it depends on players like me if i stick to what i play which is control decks this deck will continue to thrive and eat me alive if i decide i want to go play some odd rogue for a couple days and shit on all these players playing quest rogue then the people playing quest rogue are just going to go switch to probably odd rogue or what else whatever they played before quest rogue and then we'll go back to control and then the vicious cycle continues but fairly hard deck to play overall um especially during the aggro matchup it, the, the matchups where you're favorable when you're playing against like a control warrior or like a combo deck that they need like you know upwards of 15 turns like tog woggle to get where they need to go and you need basically like max maybe six or seven turns to get your quest online you know the quest pre or quest rogue really does do well but the problem is if you're playing against aggro decks this deck gets dumpster <laughs> um because a lot of the times if you're not willing to use if you don't have or you know are willing to use your vanishes appropriately and can't clear minions they're just gonna swarm you the following turn so this deck does have a lot of weaknesses but it also does very very well in the matchups that uh it does like i mentioned it does well in which is control matchups and the last deck we're actually going to cover is Paladin. Uh, we're actually not going to cover Priest at all because there's not a single Priest deck that I've seen yet to actually be popular. Um, I would pull up my stats here if you could see them on my screen. I've played against three Priests and I've played hundreds of games. Hundreds. I've played three Priests. Three. Just three. Not three of one type of deck, just three. And they were all playing something different. <laughs> so, with that... Priest is not currently on our most popular list. If some Priest deck pops up that's really good, we'll play it. But like the Mech Cthune Priest, the APM Priest, all those decks aren't popular and not a lot of people are playing them. You know, a streamer can play a deck for a day or two and get some wins with it. But are other people probably going to play that deck and lose as many times as a streamer will trying to perfect that combo? Absolutely not. People want to turn off their brains and win. And that's why you play Odd Paladin. So this deck right here... This, this is a banger. It's less than 5,000 dust. 
you get to smack that hero power every turn to make two dudes and then you get to buff those dudes and hit your opponent in the face does that sound like a deal that sounds like a deal to me so if you're an aggro lover and you like to smash that button don't have a lot of dust and want to win a bunch of games quickly this is your deck right here chat and by chat i mean youtube so i'm not streaming right now so uh this deck has been around for a while as we know odd paladin has always been very powerful uh before it was like a race you know the even paladin was really good the odd paladin's really good the even paladin's really good the odd paladin's really good and now finally the odd paladin seemingly has pulled ahead of the even paladin and has marked its territory as the deck to play if you're looking to play any sort of paladin deck uh, more specifically an aggressive paladin deck so very resilient minions um and by very resilient, I don't mean the resilient at all. There are a bunch of one ones that die instantaneously, but you've got cards in the deck that make them resilient, like Fungal Mancer and Raid Leader and Unidentified Maul and all of that good stuff. And after you've thrown up on the board and you've played all the minions you could possibly play, you play a called card divine. You play a card called Divine Favor, which says if your opponent is a good player and they have a lot of cards in their hand, you get to copy, not copy, but you get to draw as many cards as your opponent has in their hand which means you just refilled your entire hand with cards that you threw up on the board and your opponent played two spells and got rid of them all. Well, now you can throw up again. If they don't have more spells, you win the game. So bada bing, bada boom. Odd Paladin coming at you live. So with that, that wraps up all of our popular decks for this particular, you know, meta pocket. Uh, if more decks do pop up with the new expansion, I'll be releasing those in next month. I release this video at the beginning of every month. I know today was a little bit late. Normally, I release it literally at the start of the day, but unfortunately, I had some stuff going on. I couldn't do the video when I wanted, but I'd still try to get it to you as soon as possible, of course. So if you've enjoyed, let me know in the comment section below. If I think I've left anything out or you'd like to further go on with anything that I mentioned, feel free to do that as well. Always enjoy reading your comments on this particular video in spe uh, specifically just because of how much information that is in it is in it and i will wrap up this video with that thank you for watching and i'll catch you next episode of course i'm rob warshak and happy whatever the hell day it is take it easy everybody